Hi, friends. It's our podcast. And as always, we have a special guest who is going through some transitions right now. Miss Maya King. Hello. Hi there. It's How are you? such a privilege to be able to talk to you. I'm excited. You're because you're you're going through two different transitions. Three. <laughs> Three. Three. Wow. Okay. Spiritual, professional, and physical. Let's talk about it. Let's just get into it. Yeah. Introduce sure. yourself to the people. Sure. So my name is Maya. I am super honored to be here today talking with you, Erica. Um, I've been following you for some time. And to be honest. Um, you definitely influenced me <laughs> picking up the proverbial middle finger to my yeah. oppressors in the workplace. <laughs> yeah. So like my whole entire oppressors in the workplace. And I said, you know what? It's, it's enough. I think that I deserve better. I think that everyone who came before me in my lifeline, in my lineage, deserves better. Mm-hmm. And I think that the children that I hope to have someday also deserve better than this. And so I did. And uh, yeah, now I am a property management professional turned entrepreneur. Yes. In May, I started my Etsy store to resell really dope things that I found in Ghana during my travel there. Mm -hmm. And really excited where that's going to go now. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Well, that's the second thing. The first thing is that I I started a spiritual um, transition maybe three or four years ago. And it's a journey that I'll be on for the rest of my life. So I'm going to be in transition mode. Yeah. That. And then, like I said, I did the professional um, transition. And now physically, I'm transitioning from a life here in the United States to a life in Ghana, Africa. So West Africa. Wow. Yeah. That takes a lot of courage, my. Thank you. Or, or I could just be crazy because, like, I feel like my parents, <laughs> my mom specifically <laughs> thinks I'm just crazy. <laughs> But I'm going to change crazy to courageous. So thank you for that. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. How often have you talked to your mom about your transitions? uh, You guys have a close relationship? Yeah, I mean, we're close because growing up, you know, my family is really all I had. My my family, my parents were private. Um, We didn't spend a lot of time at other people's houses or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, we lived far away from other family members. So, you know, definitely she's my mother. Yeah. I think that she, like any mother, has that natural uh, uh, female and mother's intuition. Mm-hmm. And I think that she's always known that my path is going to be different. And I think that in some ways she wars with with her belief of what I should be and what I am mm-hmm. sometimes. But one thing I'll say about her is she does say what she feels like she needs to say, but then she does let me live my life. That's beautiful. Yeah. I'm sensitive. So I ro- it, it, it starts a little bit of a war with me before, but then eventually I realize like, no, I'm doing what I ought to do. And my story mm-hmm. is different. And I think that that's cool. I used to think that it was a flaw, but now I think that it's cool. So, so yeah. So intuitively, I think that she's known before I knew it was a reality it was a wish at the time but I think she's known that that's where I'm gonna go and she's kind Mm -hmm. of said it in a warning way for many months until what she doesn't realize is everything that she's warned me she she actually helped me create a plan (laughs) by her articulating her fears and concerns right yes yes. so because of that I think I've come up with a good plan to -hmm. transition and I swore to her the other day I'm here um I know that I went on a little road trip to my own like pilgrim's progress for the past few months. Mm -hmm. Um, And I told her I'm back in Orlando. I wanted to see her, but obviously at her age and with her medical thing, she's a high risk person. So I can't physically, you know, be around her or very close to her. But I told her, I was like, Hey, I know you're so scared of me (laughs) moving to Africa, you know, all Mm -hmm. the horrible um, mistruths that have been passed down to us by those, who think they know, right? let's put it that way, she believes is a very real possibility for me. And I told her, I was like, all you're doing is motivating me to show you that the things that you believe is miseducation. Exactly. I think we don't address miseducation enough, Mm -hmm. especially like miseducation in in travel and tourism Mm -hmm. and, and, and 
every aspect of our our everyday lives mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and it's only the few who get to actually experience it that have these stories to tell. Right. Exactly. To dispel a lot of these truths. So I definitely admire what you're doing. I'm excited for you. I'm excited about Thank following you. your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I'm, I, I'm, sometimes I feel like I don't really have anything to say about it except for, you know, watch me jump up and down because I'm so excited. <laughs> but I really feel that I'm fulfilling a calling. So I'm taking it day by day, but I'm moving forward. And, you know, and the words of the great Nkrumah as it is, he says, forward ever, backwards never going forward yeah. Yeah. yeah and I started a YouTube channel too to kind of share my experiences and educate my friends because everybody kind of has that well why Ghana everybody thinks that I met a guy over there I'm like yeah right really in 30 something <laughs> years I haven't managed to meet anybody to keep around like I didn't meet someone <laughs> over there you know I'm tall too I have a thing for tall guys as well so uh-huh. the odds are not in my favor <laughs> Ghanaians are not known to be tall so, Got it. so I think that that just actually is me clarifying how pure my intent is to go there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really a spiritual thing. It's really what I'm supposed to be doing. So my so YouTube what? channel is called Maya to the Motherland and you can t- check it out and, and follow along. Yes, yes, definitely. I'll put that in the show notes because this is definitely going to be real reality tv honey yeah exactly <laughs> and it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun yeah and I'm, I'm happy that you're just choosing to share the journey with us because some people go through things and they like you know they talk about it after the fact so i'm so excited when you decided to do the interview like before you actually leave yeah And like, just, you know, we had a conversation about the things that you're preparing for. Can you just give the listeners a bit of insight in terms of like some resources or some books that you may have read um, before deciding to leave this continent and go to another one (laughs) or any types of tips or things that people may need to do, like a checklist um, that you may publish uh, or have published somewhere? Sure. So um, I have been to Ghana twice. Mm -hmm. So my experience is a little bit different because I've had firsthand experience there. Um, I met a real life angel when I lived in New York. Um, My friend, she's Ghanaian um, and raised in London and moved to New York um, in pursuit of her career and really doing really great things. Uh-huh. And when I met her, I would I just fell in love with her energy, who she is as a person. Uh-huh. And she's the first like African friend I think I have ever had. Well, no, that is very not true. But she's the she's been my best friend. Let's put that that way. What's and her so, name? Like, what's her Instagram? Yeah. Like, you wanna, you wanna <laughs> oh, she'll kill me. But her name is Maureen <laughs> Appenting Mahoney Ose because she just got married in December. Okay. I also Congrats. played a Cupid role in that uh, <laughs> holy matrimony, that beautiful union. So I'm definitely going to shout her out. She's um, a marketing executive with um, Rocketon Marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's just doing amazing things um, for Black women, for young Black women, yeah. and for for African women. Um, she's, she's doing great things in her workplace. God has blessed her with those opportunities. So she impresses me every day. But what I was saying about her, what she, what attracted me to her was she's just a generally amazing person. Everybody likes her when they meet her. There's no one who can say, I don't like that girl. If you do, there's something wrong with you, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so she had always told me, my birthday's on Christmas day. (laughs) She had always told me for your birthday one year, I'm taking you to Ghana. It's the best time of year to go at Christmas because you know, all the Ghanaians that live outside of the country come back. You know, mm-hmm. it's a very family-oriented, community-oriented time. There's a lot of celebration around the holidays. And it's just one day after the next of fun. And, you know, the weather is great, especially coming from New York. You go to, like, Caribbean weather. So right. she invited me out in December of 2017. I went and was blown away. I really didn't know what to expect. I was, you know, also transitioning back to Miami from living in New York three years so Mm -hmm. I didn't have the time to like look at the YouTube videos and see what to expect 
I just packed like she told me to and just went with my expectations open. And, and it, it was just amazing. So I've been to Ghana two times. I've been to two other African countries as well. So mm-hmm. like just to compare, um, I have her and her whole family, um, a lot of friends that are Ghanaian that live in New York. So that was a huge resource to me. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, I also follow like Wode Maya, Ivy Prosper. Um, and there's a, another young lady that her name um, escapes me right now. And I'll remember it. She's German and Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. But she uh, likes to talk a lot about um, um, her life there, like how easy it is to build a house, um, obtain land. Okay. Her name is Vanessa Canby. Okay. K-A-N-B-I. We can put that in the show notes as well for the listeners. Yeah. So those are some, those, so obviously going there is what planted the seed, Mm -hmm. knowing people watered the seed and the questions that when I went there the first time in December, 2017, I knew I would be moving there at some point. I just knew it. Wow. And I did my research, you know, in bite size, enjoyable um, doses by watching YouTubers and stuff like that. There's not really a book, um, but I did go to like a Gooba Careers event in London um, early February before COVID started. Mm -hmm. And I met a fascinating lady who did write a book on how to transition your career to Ghana. And as soon as I find that book, I will tell you as a follow-up, because I think that it's very important. There's a lot of career opportunities, Mm -hmm. um, either entrepreneurship or joining careers, um, taking your existing career there and being employed. So that also really stirred me and made me excited to go. That is, uh, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know what to say at this point. Like you have so much going your way. Like <laughs> it's, yes. it's almost like destiny. I receive that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No, and I agree with you with that, not to cut you off, but I agree with you because when I had the idea of going to Ghana, I really mm-hmm. just thought it was an idea. I know I'm a dreamer. I know I'm an adventurer. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, yeah, well, this is like the dream of all dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. But once I decided, like once I said, yeah, for sure, this is happening. It's almost been like watching a movie when I see how every single thing aligned Mm -hmm. at the right time. Just enough for me to feel that I'm moving in the right direction. So one thing I'll say is that I'm going, I'm leaving for Ghana on October 1st. I've been, pre- I've been preparing since the beginning of May. <laughs> uh, I have been putting my own uh, comments on the current president uh, of Ghana's uh, Instagram page. I'm like, hey, y'all let me know when you're <laughs> going to reopen the border because I'm not trying to come out, come see something over there, you know? Right. Uh, I did my own job of plaguing, you know, Ghana's tourism department and their diaspora affairs department. Mm-hmm. y'all let me know don't forget to revive you we americans is dying out here we need to come out there you know yeah. um, so when they announced that the borders would reopen in september i went ahead and booked my ticket for october why one to give them time to work through the covid process mm-hmm. for their airports and number two to give myself you know all right it's final lap time time to put all your energy in it focus daily on on getting there and just go so I leave on October 1st and I made a commitment to go for three months. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I'm deciding to go for three months is it's a lot less overwhelming than permanent change, right? Right. Um, number two, it's an opportunity to go uh, at an easy pace. I want to learn the common tongue. It's called tree. I want to Mm -hmm. learn how to speak at least some words as much Mm -hmm. as necessary. I want to explore um, being able to pursue my personal passions of networking, knowing people, fashion, um, and studying history of of the people Um, and geography, biology. Like those are all my individual little passions and I would love to go um, and pursue that there. So three months gives me that time to see if I really can make it as an expat living in Ghana, right? Mm, yeah. And, yeah. And can I pursue citizenship one day? Mm-hmm. So I think a huge component of that is learning the culture, trying to assimilate with the culture gently. 
mm-hmm. and being mindful of the time that I have to go around and see. So I don't plan to go and sit by the beach and go to Sandbox and, you know, Republic Bar every night. You right. know, I definitely plan to go there. Right. I've done those things. I've been a few times and I, it's time for me to get out of Accra and see the rest of Ghana I and see. share that experience with anybody who's interested to know. So, And then figure out how you can actually bring something to Ghana, like how you're actually able to share yourself and and your talents with that land as well. Exactly. Where would I fit in? You know? Yeah. What what could I do in service and how can I serve? I think a lot of folks think, oh, if you're going to Ghana, you should go and be on an expat salary and have an opportunity and, you know, be killing it, live like a king Mm-hmm. And I think like, yeah, but you know, some kings serve, right? Not all kings just live at the top of the food chain. So mm-hmm. like you said, another component of going there for three months is to figure out where do I fit in in the clock, in the, in the, in the uh, gears and in the, in the behind the clock space kind of thing. Where do I fit in? Yeah. How am I going to fulfill my purpose here mm-hmm. in this land? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited yeah. for you. Um, talk a little bit about your Etsy store before we wrap up the interview and um, just let people know like how they can find some of the things that you are uh, selling. Yeah, so my Etsy store started because every time I came back from traveling mm-hmm. and I'd have like a clutch or earrings or bracelets or you know, a dress. And he was like, Oh, okay. where did you get that? I want one. And I'd be like, yeah, well, it's mine. <laughs> and I, I literally was walking down the street, walking my dog one day. And this lady came running behind me and she's like, where did you get those shorts? I want them. I need them right now. And I'm like, well, I made them for me in Ghana. And she's like, if you sell it to me, I'll buy it for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and she ended up coming to my house after that and buying like most of the things that I had made when I was in Ghana. So that energy has been following me around and I decided to make it work for me. And I put the things that I had collected Mm -hmm. for this purpose. I think I originally planned on doing the store because I wanted to create passive income that would allow me to travel throughout the year. Mm -hmm. I think we all determined that 2020 would be our year to travel, but then COVID happened. Right. So (laughs) so I I redirected the intention to, this is the you know, if you buy the things from the store, I'm going to use that money to get to Ghana, right? And that's exactly what I did. And I have in a few months managed to sell out the majority of my inventory. And I'm looking now at where's the next phase, because I don't want to be gimmicky. I want to make sure that the store is about education and information. And Mm -hmm. so now I'm featuring this super dope lady, a South African woman, Papama Natwisha of Butter Pudding. She has these really dope shirts that say, Africa, your time is now, which is a very powerful intention to walk around and carry on our, on our bodies. Mm-hmm. And it's a very powerful message to walk around and distribute to the world, right? To our communities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and get people to ask that question. What does that mean? And if you Google it, search results will come up that Africa has defied the expectations around COVID. It's almost like it's not happening there because oh, wow. of how smart and how caring the leaders of those countries are and mm-hmm. how they put everything else on hold and focus on preventing a pandemic from taking over their country. Mm-hmm. And you can see it, the data and the numbers are there. If you Google you know, why Africa's time is now, you'll see that Africa has all the resources that the entire world needs. Mm-hmm. It's located on one continent. It should be the richest country, but it is not because of exploitation and colonization that many African leaders are seeing it's time to start breaking out of that. Um, Is it Burundi who went back to France or Germany and said, yo, you owe me money and get out of here. You know, it's happening. So those t-shirts are on my store. So you you can check that out. And I'm also right after her featuring another um, African entrepreneur. She's um, Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. She and her husband own Republic Bar that, you know, everybody knows about. If you've been to Ghana, you you should have gone one time. And if you haven't, go back and go. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she designs and makes beautiful batik print accessories, clutches, wallets, headbands, fans, yes. socks, 
So all of that is on there. If you want to get something to look unique, um, mm-hmm. to accessorize up your looks, you know, to match Beyonce's level in her Black is King video, which I'm telling you is another thing that is setting Africa on the front of the world stage. Wow. Um, hit, check up the store. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. I'm definitely going to put the links in the show notes. And I appreciate your time, Maya. Oh my God, I'm so excited for you. I'm almost speechless. <laughs> I'm almost speechless. And I just, I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to see where this journey takes you. I just appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate you too. And I thank you for giving me the platform to, you know, further speak it into existence that this is what's happening. And I, I definitely approach it with a lot of joy and a lot of um, humility and, and, and respect because it's a calling. But if I can help one person look at their current situation and say, hey, I deserve better, and that person just takes the first step towards that, then I think that I will feel accomplished in life. So that's what I'm doing. That's what this is about. And in the meantime, I'm going to go live in the best country. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have fun and I'm definitely going to be you. following your journey I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I we'll will. let you take your time to finish your preparations you too be blessed thank you so much for having me on the show uh, it's my pleasure take care you too bye bye